Then went further to you have the unit group in K over the unit group in the order. And this number has to divide the order of the fundamental unit. And so if you can understand something about the order of the fundamental unit, you can understand something about this number here. This has just been my personal motivation for why I've been looking at this, if the problem itself hasn't been motivating. All right, so it turns out, so the maximal order, so we say order of our fundamental unit is maximal if, well, there's three cases. Um, if it's p minus 1, and p splits, if it's p plus 1, p is inert, and the norm is 1, And if it's twice that, if otherwise p is inert and the norm is minus 1. Um, so I don't have time for an example. So why do this with rational primes rather than with prime ideals? Or, right. Um, the reason, so, so the reason I was interested in doing rational primes rather than prime ideals is because the rational primes are the ones that show up here. Um, they're the only, the conductor, conductors of non-maximal orders are always products of rational primes. Um, I suppose that nothing in this argument, really, nothing in, his, in, in Roskam's proof of this conjecture requires that the prime be rational, but he treats, but he, he ends up just combining the two factors into one anyways. They, they, they behave the same way. So at the end of the day, it's asking the same question. So, so just to make this simpler, um, just for notationally, this V he sets to be um, the fundamental unit if the norm is 1, and square it if the norm is minus 1, so that this V is the smallest unit with um, norm 1 either the fundamental unit or the square of it. So the idea is going to go exactly the same way. We're still looking, even though we're looking either in, um, if P is inert, we're looking at a, um, an FP squared star, which is still cyclic, and so a group of some order, and we're going to look at the power of V in that order, at the power, at what, what, whether P is a V power, an elf power, whether V is an elf power. And if it splits, we're, we're looking re at the residue mod both of them. So if P splits, we have, you know, OK mod P is FP plus FP. And so again, we're sort of, the order of something in here divides P minus 1. Because you just behave separately on each of them. And if P is inert, we have, um, P is inert, we have FP squared. And so again, the order the order divides p squared minus 1. And so this is the idea again. We have a cyclic group of fixed order. And so we go about defining, we're going to look at primes that cause problems again in the power of v. So we have, you have to, so you do have to do with deal, deal with two separate cases, one where p is inert and one where p is split. And the proofs go almost exactly the same way but you have to take care of a bunch of, you have to take care of one thing on one side and one thing on the other side. 
So I'll try and write everything up on the board, but I'm never going to prove it for more than one thing. And I might not prove it for either, depending on how much time we have. So minus is going to be, the minus symbol is just going to mean we're only looking at inert primes, and the plus is going to be we're looking at split primes. And since we're looking at a density, we can forget about two. P inert in K and L doesn't divide um, well let's let's do it that um, P squared minus one is not congruent to one mod is uh, not congruent to one mod L or a is not an elf power. He, the other way he, he defines this is he has kp, the kernel of the norm map from fp squared to f, the norm map, and um, looking at the cyclic group, it's the same idea, but this one, I think writing it this way makes it more clear what's going on. Again, you're just looking at residues. You can have SL plus, which is a little more complicated depending on when L, whether L is 2 or not. So I'll just write it up when L isn't 2 so we can avoid, um, <coughs> avoid trouble, avoid compli unnecessary complication. Splits in K. Um, P is not congruent to P, sorry, should be a zero. P minus one is not congruent to zero mod L, or A is not an uh, B is not an alpha power. So, so, okay, so again, the same idea. We're looking at the residue, these p squared minus 1 and p minus 1 are the order of the cyclic group. And either it doesn't matter because it's not possible that L divides an exponent in a meaningful way in any way that's going to cut down the size of the group it generates, or it's not an L power if it's a possibility. Um, right. And so, again, just like before, we're going to try and take the intersection of all of these groups, of all of these collections, these sets, and the intersection is going to be the set of primes where this is a maximal element. So we have S minus is the intersection of all L prime of XL minus, S plus, same thing, and S is the union. So at the end of the day, this is all the inert primes where, F's, where the fundamental unit's maximal mod P, the split primes where it is, and then we take their union. And so now we need to go through the same proof again. We need to find some extensions that quantify this divisibility and then do an inclusion exclusion with a bunch of analysis. So let me do the analysis part first because it should at least, the theorem should at least go on the board in a way that we can think about it. So this analysis is actually done by Murdy before, uh, Ram Murdy, before this paper. And so, um, so this theorem is the key theorem in the analysis he ends up using at the end. So, um, so for all L.